Today we are going to be painting Venice at sunset and using variegated washes and dry wet on dry brushwork for the ripples with a limited palette of cobalt, alizarine and raw sienna. You can see how I have been trying out all different colours. doesn't matter about any cabbages or whatever. I'd just like you to try out different colours to see how they mix. Because actually uh, this side is warm and this side is cool. So we need to take that in board. This I'm using cobalt, a variegated wash from the uh, cobalt down to the warmer tones below. And then just let them melt melt together. Take a big brush. I've actually put this onto an A5 size, but I put it onto I put it onto a slightly bigger piece of paper to have a framework around it as well. And what you're going to do is take a big brush and you're just going to wet down to the horizon only. So please note, just down to the horizon. And you're gonna take a bit of work from the top down. So overlap the blues. So put cobalt blue on. Overlap two strokes, clean the brush. And let it go down. If you have this beading on the side, take a take um, tissue and just mop that up. But keep going down so it still remains wet. Then mix your orange with a yellow, raw sienna and alizarine. and start from the bottom, working up. And then you will see that. Melting into, blending into that. For the sun, I want you to take the, while we're doing that, you can mop this up by leaning it forward and taking off any excess water. And you can also move it around as well. If you're happy the way it's blending, just leave it. And what I want to do for the sun, which is a really good little tip, is take the end of a tube, put some tissue around it, and stamp it down into the sky while it's still wet and you will just get a very faded sun. I'm not really bothered about if it stands out as much. I just want it to be, you know, there so, and I can always touch it up as well with other like gouache or whatever else so we're just going to actually wait for that to dry and then we will come back to it this is blended together really nicely I'm very pleased with this I'm not don't worry about if it sort of dribbles down you get these darker bits towards the horizon if you haven't taken them off by tissue because actually we're going to be going over this with a cool wash of purple but what I want you to do is use the same some yellow that you used for the sky so I'm using raw sienna and I'm just going to start using a Chinese brush the tip or a small brush something with a point and just 
Don't worry about the gondolier because we'll be going over that as well. Little sharp U shaped strokes. Smaller here. And then as you get to the bottom, you can get bigger. And as you go towards the bottom, you can mix a little bit more alizarine with it. Because as you see, as you're going away, it gets cooler and cooler. So we're going to have a very plain, simple sky, but a lot of ripples on the water. And again, then you're going to take the cobalt blue and just do the same here. Don't worry if it bleeds into the yellow because actually you do need to have that overlapping a little bit. Otherwise, it will look too divided. And for bigger strokes, you want more pressure. And I would take some of the cobalt, start to take some of the cobalt on the base as well, because this is where the sun is really reflecting. And you can use the cool colors as a framework. So you can see that that's actually building up really nicely. You're then going to mix an alizarine and the cobalt for the silhouette of the buildings. Now, this is called contre jour, which is known as against the day. It means that if you're looking at directly into the sunlight, into the sun, it means... I wouldn't actually suggest this because you might... You don't want to damage your eyes, but you will see everything as a silhouette or um, against it. And that is a technique called contre jour. So I'm going to mix a light wash of purple and we shall put this into the building. I'm using a Chinese brush that holds a lot of water. So you do want um, a paint brush that actually holds water rather than not. So I have mixed, now can you see here, I have mixed a purple, you've got cobalt on this side and alizarine on this side. When you mix more blue, it's going to become cooler. When you mix more red, it'll become warmer. When you look at this building, it's cooler on this side, warmer on this side. This is what we're going to try and do with the same mix. So I have mixed more of the blue tones here. and a wash actually add a bit more blue in fact that's a bit better if it comes out too strongly I'm dampening the brush and so that I can dilute the washes even more and with a Chinese brush You've got this point, this lovely point on the end that you can just put in the details. Because the one thing that's really, really important with this is that you get these quirky little rooftop details. Don't worry about the windows because we can put that in. Do you see that's coming out nicely? And don't forget it'll dry lighter. So as we're going across here, then you want to start mixing a little bit more alizarine in as you get closer to the sun. Still a light wash. I'm not going to make this too heavy and dark. I might add a little bit of orange to it as well 
because that is directly where the sun is hitting. Can you see that? So you, it would be warmer tones here. And then we're going to start going back to the cooler tones, cooler purples. like that and then we're going to let that dry and while we're waiting for it to dry we're just going to put in the cool purple of the gondolier so just to point out i have Missed, I've literally put in one gondolier. You're very welcome to put in both, but I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. And some just the posts here and a few here and here. I've missed out a lot of the detail. Now, you're very welcome to put in detail if you want, but just for time limitations. And actually, I quite like this, the simplicity of it as well. So I'm just trying to... put the focus just on this gondolier here. You want him to have a very simple shape. Remember to start at the body. Notice how I started with the legs and I worked up, otherwise he will come become, sometimes people put in two bigger heads and they end up looking like aliens, which you don't want. Then you're just going to put the reflection in and it's going to get less and less as you go away, like that. Then we're going to put in, I'm going to leave actually these posts and I tell you why, because we need them to overlap the horizon and that's still wet and you don't want cabbages as well. While we're waiting for this to dry, you can then take some of this purple and work from the bottom up. So can you see it's darker on the bottom working up because that's farthest away from the sun. Big, slightly bigger, you like shapes. And I would go very important that you, can you see that? So you're building up depth. There's going to be more purple on this side because it's the cooler. And as you go away, the U shapes are going to become smaller. And this is directly above, below the dome. So you really do want that to reflect as if it is reflecting into the water. A few little ones, not too much, not too equal. The most important thing is you don't make it equal. So you can overlap some of these lines. Don't forget to stand back from it and see where you need to put more or less. So I'm going to leave it there for the moment and then we'll put the posts in. To the final touches, we're going to take a light, very light, purpley wash and just graze over these ripples just to take out some of the light reflection from the shadow underneath the dome. That's all you need. I wouldn't put anything, anything more.
just to soften that just a little bit. And you can use the tip of your brush just to add a few more you like shapes just to blend that in. So you don't want a hard line here. Then you're going to make thicker purple. I'm using the alizarine and ultramarine. And they're about the same tone as the gondolier. And I am just putting in a thick post, which please note is over, just overlapping the horizon line. They're all, all the posts are going to be overlapping the horizon line here. And then I'm just going to take a little squiggle for reflection. Like that. Because tip, if you let any of those posts hit either exactly the bottom of the horizon or the top of those buildings, it will completely flatten the perspective. Always be careful with your overlapping. I'm going to make that a little bit darker, I think, as well. So we're nearly finished. Lastly, what we're going to do is just put in these little, there's a little bit of little openings here and here. So the way you're going to do that is take some white gouache and mix it with exactly the same colour that was in the sky. So you've got this orangey colour here and then you're going to take some white gouache and mix it so it becomes opaque but the same colour as the sky. I'm using a rigger brush. Uh, make sure where you put your hands, you don't want to smudge the pearls. And then you can just put in some detail on the roofs. I think they're called cupolas, aren't they? The smaller domes at the top of the bigger domes. Take that out. And you see, it's given it a little bit of light relief. If you feel that you want to sharpen up those angles, you can do that. I don't think there's anything else really to do here. I think that is about it. You can obviously put, take a small brush and put in the spires and things like that, but I think you're just really looking at an impression of Venice. Note that this post, just very quickly, is darker, is coming forward, and it's sort of uh, similar in tone to this one, and these are more faded, moving it back, and I would finish it there. So, have fun in Venice.